Let's start with a question. If I say cardboard, what are you thinking about? <laughs> yeah, something like this, right? And if you got this, uh, if your parents went to IKEA and they bought a billy, they brought back these big boxes, you love them, right? As a child, you made things out of them. But there are other things made out of cardboard. Something like this. So we really put a lot of effort in making a house here. But yeah, there are also other things that are made of cardboard, which are very nice. Like these. Lamps. Even entire domes. And by a picture of this dome, you can see it in the right top, it's made by Shiro Ban, a Japanese architect. I was really inspired to do something with cardboard. It's not because it's cardboard, but the way he, he was able to make it. He really studied how the cardboard was made, these cardboard tubes. He learned that during the production of these cardboard tubes, they were cut off, so the length was limitless. And therefore, you could make this dome with cardboard tubes at least 70 meters long. Well, I came across this picture and I wanted to do something with cardboard. I was studying architecture a year ago at the TU Delft and I wanted to do something with my graduation. And then there was the assignment, you could choose to make a beach house. I thought, yeah, if I could make a beach house from cardboard, that would be amazing. So I did. This was the beach house I made for my graduation. It's a picture, but we're maybe going to produce it this year. It would be great to do. But I also used, or during my graduation study, I learned more about the cardboard and I thought, yeah, you can make everything out of cardboard because everything has been done. Chairs to enormous houses for refugees. But you should only use the cardboard where it's meant for or where it's better for. So in this house, I, it's, it's a wood and a cardboard house where the cardboard is only benefited. So in the bottom, you see these tubes where the sand could blow through because Rijkswaterstaat pumps up sand on the beach which has to blow into the dunes naturally. But because all of these houses, it gets blocked. So there had to be a solution for it. So I made these tubes do that. Um, they could dissolve after two years when they were filled with the sand. And the top of the house people could build themselves for, so only during the summertime the house would be there and the wintertime it would be gone. But during this graduation, and during your graduation is the best time to get distraction, I came across this picture. Really, if you're doing a your graduation, do something else during it, it really helps. <laughs> I came across this picture and I was really shocked. I've never been to a festival since last year and this was my first encounter with it. One out of four people leaves their tent behind at a festival. One out of four. Means in the Netherlands alone, 25,000. And this happens worldwide. And I was so shocked. I thought, yeah, I'm doing something with cardboard. Maybe this could be the solution. So we came up with the car tent. Yeah, it looks crazy, right? 100% cardboard tent, which we produce for less CO2 and we can re fully recycle afterwards. But yeah, this is a picture from halfway our project last year, so, but how do you get there? You know, uh, when I talk to people and I say, yeah, I'm making cardboard tents, and people, so the, one of the half says, oh wow, I, I saw that in a newspaper, that's amazing. And the other half says, <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> but we were crazy enough to make one, or actually this is how we started. We sent this picture to 10 festival organizations and we got some responses. And they're all, they could all be put in the same folder because one festival organization just sent back an, a picture of rain. <laughs> yeah. The other sent back the picture with the boxes where we were tied up together. So yeah, that's, and how do you go from there? And what we did then was actually something which, where you can read about from the lean startup and everything. But we actually did it, not knowing that it, that's the way to do it, but that happened. So we emailed a lot of manufacturers. We, yeah, we got an order from Heineken, 50,000 tents. Are you able to make that? Yeah, 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 sure. Because then they get into 50,000, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, could you produce one so we can see how it works? And that's what we did. <laughs> so we got, so this was in my student house and I think it was quite small. So we got these large packs from all these factories. My roommates were really, what are you doing? But what we did with these 10 tents, we put them underneath a shower in my garden for a few hours. And this was my, uh, my co-founder. And w after three hours from one tent, we looked at each other. Yeah, yeah this is going to work. This is going to work. Three hours time, you know? Normal festival takes, what is it, four days or something? <laughs> Didn't matter. 
And then we went to these first festivals and what we said to people, yeah, you can buy cardboard tents from us for uh, 35 euros. Uh, water tight, yeah, four days, no problem. So that's what we did. <laughs> we went to this first festival and we uh, actually on the first festival we gave them away for people to test. And they were actually too late for the breakfast because they said, yeah, it stays dark and cool in the morning. I, I can sleep longer in my tent. I don't get burned out of it. And we were like, hey, maybe this idea is going to get better and better. And that's what happened. And this picture was at the second festival. And then uh, the municipality said, yeah, we want to sponsor the tents. We can, we can be able to print on the tents. We were like, yeah, of course we can print on the tents. We don't have a print switch large enough. So what we did is we cut out some wood and we sprayed the logo of the municipality on it. The mayor came, sit in the tent, was very happy, picture for the mayor, went away, and then these guys came and they said, yeah, <laughs> my logo time. But we learned, yeah, we can also print on these tents. And what we actually thought then, yeah, is if we want to solve this problem, which is happening because people can buy very cheap tents now, we have to be the better tent and the cheaper one. And how can we achieve the cheaper one? With the sponsors. And that's what happened. This picture, I think, when we were two months in process, um, we got the Rabobank crazy enough to sponsor. We said, yeah, we tested everything, certified uh, from water tightness to everything, no problem, no problem. And this was uh, the day before the storm, but later on, <laughs> it lo almost looked the same. I think 10 tents broke down uh, due to the rain and the wind. Um, but yeah, what we could do here, we had the, the first the freshman year for in Delft who could sleep in these tents during their first weekend and everything. And it went quite well. And actually, you know, these pictures came on the news and everyone thought, yeah, this is a really, really crazy idea. And in the background, we were like, oh my God, what are we doing? <laughs> but during that time, we really started evolving and improving this tent. And even more people started to believe in it. So this was at a festival. And what, had, what happened here is the normal selling price we tried to achieve is 35 euros for a tent. But here we could sell them for 15 euros because you put it on it. And that's cheaper than the tent at your supermarket. And you don't have to bring it with you. So this tent's already there. You can buy it with your ticket. And this is how we want to solve the problem. And now we're actually... Last, uh, I think a few months ago, we, we said something. Yeah, we're taking these tents to the recycling afterwards. Well, the good tents we donate to schools and scoutings. But the good tents, were, or some tents, we're also recycling. But shouldn't we make something else out of that? So that's what we're working on now. Because if we can make something out of that which is more value, we can lower the price again, having a cheaper tent, which is also better. And that's where we really want to go, because we want to solve this problem. Well, this is the new version for now. And if I look at my old tent from the first year, I really am. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> It had doors on two sides, so it was more like a tunnel. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't stick together. Um, we had this uh, plastic knots to uh, attach the door and the sides together, which kind of couldn't be reused. We had pegs where the car would just could go through and everything. And now I'm quite satisfied with this one, but it takes a lot of time to uh, to see that. You know what happened when this triangle and it rained very lot? It became more and more like a teepee. And just by putting a simple fold, and now when you see this fold, you think, yeah, that's a good idea. We didn't see it at the time, but this fold actually keeps the tent upright. So even during rain, when it, it takes up water, so the carpet's uncoated, so it, so it takes up water, but very slowly. Um, it doesn't it go to the TP form anymore, just with a simple fold. Yeah, and of course, we, put, we, we had troubles with the door, so we said, okay, how can we solve this problem more? Well, we would, let's do one door, then we only have half the problem left. And then we collaborated on the door, we put a panel in front, and so we keep continuing with this. And I got a lot of questions from investors who said, yeah, and how are you going to pre protect this idea? And we said, yeah, we, we're just going to go for it and we'll see how it ends, you know? And it's a crazy idea, and we started with the render, and everybody thought we were crazy, and now we're here and everybody loves us. So the difference between success and a crazy idea is just doing it. So the message I want to give to you is, if you have a crazy idea, it's not a very crazy idea until you make it a success. Thank you.